Hello. Um, yes, we are continuing to read Philippians together. So thank you for tuning in to see what on earth we're going to be looking at today. So, yes, it is the continuing journey through Philippians that we're looking at together. Uh, today, it's Philippians 2, verses 19 to 30, and it has a strange name in it. So forgive me uh, if my pronunciation is off. OK, so I shall read this to you first. Are you ready? So it's Philippians 2, verses 19 to 30. I hope in the Lord Jesus to send Timothy to you soon, that I also may be cheered when I receive news about you. I have no one else like him who will show genuine concern for your welfare. For everyone looks out for their own interests, not those of Jesus Christ. But you know that Timothy has proved himself because as a son with his father, he has served with me in the work of the gospel. I hope, therefore, to send him as soon as I see how things go with me. And I am confident in the Lord that I myself will come soon. But I think it's necessary to send back to you Epaphroditus, my brother, co-worker and fellow soldier, who is also your messenger, whom you sent to take care of my needs. For he longs for all of you and is distressed because you heard he was ill. Indeed, he was ill and almost died. But God had mercy on him and not on him only, but also on me to spare me sorrow upon sorrow. Therefore, I am, I am the more eager to send him so that when you see him again, you may be glad and I may have less anxiety. So then welcome him in the Lord with great joy and honour people like him, because he almost died for the work of Christ. He risked his life to make up for the help you yourselves could not give me. It's a bit of a strange one, really. If, you know, some people go, why are you focused on this, Steve? It's just Paul writing about some other people. But actually, I think that's brilliant. I think that's a great example of what we can be doing. Let's not forget that as Paul was writing this letter to the church in Philippi, to the Philippians, that he was in prison. And yet from his prison cell, from his lockdown, from his isolation, he writes encouragement, not only for a church, but for individuals that has made a big difference to him. He acknowledges with thankfulness the people that God has put into his life to help him even when he's in an isolated prison cell. He talks about Timothy. He talks of Timothy with such a fondness and an affection and a thankfulness. I think it's brilliant. What he does is essentially he bigs up Timothy, he encourages Timothy. So when um, Timothy arrives at Philippi, they will they'll receive him well. Not only that, but there's something incredible happening here. You can hear Paul's heart for Timothy in the way he talks about Timothy to the Philippians. He does it so when Timothy arrives at the, Philipp at the church in Philippi, that they will receive him well and they'll already have a good opinion of him. But something even bigger happens, which I don't know if Paul was being intentional about or not, or whether he's being uh, really savvy about human behaviour. When Timothy arrives in Philippi, I'm sure one of the things the people in the Philippians in Philippi would do is tell Timothy just what Paul said about him. They go, oh, Timothy, it's great to see you. We can't wait to hear what you've got to say to us because Paul's told us this, 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 this and this about you. Human nature is to talk about other people. It's often used negatively as a form of gossip. But what about positively? Paul here is sowing seeds of encouragement. For Timothy, so that when Timothy arrives at Philippi, not only is Timothy received well, but also Paul is like understanding that when Timothy gets there, he will hear encouragement of what Paul thinks about him. It's great. It's really quite clever because it builds up the church in Philippi because it gives them hope for what's coming. But it also builds up Timothy because when he gets there, he'll be received well and he'll hear the good things Paul has been saying about him. Who are we thankful for? Who do you, uh, who are you, who do you really value that's in your life right now? Who's helping, uh, who's helping or has helped lead you to Christ? Do you talk about them? Do you talk well of them? Are you thankful not only to them, but are you thankful about them? 
When their name crops up in conversation, do you go, oh, they're such a great person. I know Jeff Johns. He's brilliant. He's done this, 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 and this for me. It's encouraging because it builds up Jeff Johns. And then also, in a way, when Jeff Johns, whoever this Jeff Johns is, obviously I've just made up a name, talks to that person, he hears the positive encouragement, which will build him up. We are called as the body of Christ to encourage one another and build up each other. We read, I think it's in James, that the words have the power to build up and to destroy. We should be building each other up uh, directly. Of course we should. But are we encouraging about each other, not only to each other? What Paul does here is he's in isolation. He's in lockdown. He's, I'm sure he's given Timothy encouragement to him directly. But he's not just encouraging to Timothy. Here he's being encouraging about Timothy. We can be the same. We can be the voice of encouragement, the voice of love, the voice of building each other up, not just to each other, but about each other as well. The words we speak are incredibly important. And then Paul also talks of Epaphroditus. <sighs> Got that name right twice now. OK, who is from the church in Philippi? He's going back to the Philippians people after helping and serving Paul. Again, Paul speaks well of him, just like he does Timothy, which is fantastic. But not only that, but Paul goes a little bit further with Epaphroditus. He shares some of Epaphroditus' hardships. I'm sure he does it with his permission. Why does he do that? I think he does that because Epaphroditus is from Philippi. The Philippians are his people. And we're called as a church, as a community, as a body to build up, to encourage, to pray for and care for each other. Epaphroditus has obviously been through a really tough time with Paul and he needs to go home for a bit of care from his local church family. Paul is sharing that hardship with them so that whilst Epaphroditus is journeying home, people can be praying for him. And then when Epaphroditus returns home, he can be received not only well, but he can be cared for by his church community in the way that he needs in light of the hardships he's had to face in his time with Paul. This isn't gossiping about uh, difficult stuff. This is Paul helping a community to love someone from their church. As I say, I'm sure he does it with permission. I think we could be doing the same. We are called as the body of Christ to be united, to be sharing in ourselves with each other. I want to encourage you, please. Share your hardships with each other, but give permission. To ask other people to, to share it, to pray for you as well. I love the prayer gatherings that we're having on a Wednesday and a Sunday night. I love that we get to pray for other people. But what I love even more is when we get someone gets to share something about someone from Riverside and we get to pray as well. Why? Because that brings us in unity when we get to pray for each other in church too. Bringing each other forwards to God in prayer. When I look back on the comments in Facebook timeline and I see people saying that they're praying for each other, that's so encouraging to see. And we can be part of that process even in lockdown. So please share your hardships with each other, but also give permission to each other to share each other's hardships with others so they can be part of that prayer, care and loving journey too. It also helps us to keep our eyes off ourselves. The more hardships we know that other people are in, the more we can be focusing on their hardships, on how we can love, care, support and pray for them, as opposed to focusing solely on our own needs. Paul, from prison, from lockdown, not only encourages a church, but he encourages individuals and then encourages a church in how they encourage and love and support these individuals as well. We can be doing that too, even in lockdown. The two greatest commandments that Jesus talks about still stand. Love God with everything and love your neighbour as you love yourself. In lockdown, the greatest temptation we have is to stay focused on ourselves. Why? Because we're in our own home. We can't see anybody else. We're in our own thing. That would have been a temptation for Paul as well. But Paul disciplines himself 
to stay focused on God and to stay focused on loving other people, just as Christ tells us to do. His soul will be benefiting from that. Because the more we spend focus on ourselves, the more self-consumed we become. But our faith is not about us. Our faith is about God and about loving other people. Even in lockdown, we can discipline ourselves to stay focused on loving each other, building up each other and encouraging each other. And when we do that, funnily enough, things like frustration, boredom start to disappear. Because boredom is very, it's all about me. I don't know what to do with myself. The more we know of each other's situations and the more we want to encourage each other, our head and our heart then becomes filled with them. And we can spend our time thinking about them, contacting them, writing them, um, WhatsApping them and praying about them as well. Reaching out to God and to each other, just like Jesus told us to, even in lockdown. And when we do that, it benefits our soul as well. And then there's something sneaky, something sneaky that Paul just chucks in in the middle. Verse 24. I am confident in the Lord that I myself will come soon. Paul is making plans for post prison. Paul is making post lockdown plans, which I'm sure many of you are making post lockdown plans as well. What I love about Paul's post lockdown plans oh, is it's not about him going on holiday. He is not writing a bucket list of all the things he can't wait to do when he gets out of prison. He's thinking about who can he encourage in God when he comes out? Who can he see to help, love, care, support, lead closer to Jesus? It's not about himself and all the things he can't wait to do. He's making plans post lockdown for how he can be serving God and serving the kingdom. I want to encourage you, follow Paul's example here. Yes, there's loads of things we all can't wait to do. There is. I can't wait to see the sea. I can't wait. But if all I'm doing is making plans for me post lockdown, I'm not really living out the way Jesus wants me to. Jesus says, love God with everything and love your neighbour as you love yourself. How about we make post lockdown plans like Paul of who we can see, who we can encourage, who we can love, who we can point closer to God. How can we be serving one another and then praying into that as well? When we do that, we will see more of God post lockdown. We will see more of the kingdom of God post lockdown. But you'll have more of, as well of God in lockdown. More of the kingdom of God in your heart. You will be closer to him. And that's my biggest prayer for all of us at this time. That we would know God more. We would serve his kingdom more. And that post lockdown, yes, our world will look different. But I'm praying and trusting God will be using us to bring the kingdom of God in ways that the world has never seen before. Are we preparing ourselves for that? Wherever you are, have a great week. Stay safe. Wash your hands. Follow the government guidelines. We can't wait to see you. Keep tuning into the prayer gatherings and the services. We love doing that with you. Please keep commenting. Um, and I can't wait to see you soon. Have a great week.